Okay, y'all. It's Kristen Marie Miller here, The Unpopular Opinion, and I'm going to do 90 Day Fiance with Kimberly. We're going to keep Kimberly to the end because this bitch is cray cray. All right, so got my binder. We're doing 90 Day Fiance. Um, we're like mid season of before the 90 days. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of background. Um, the first couple we have, like, okay, side note Alina's been fired, and we all know why. But let's just get into Alina and Caleb real quick, right? So we have Alina and Caleb. Um, Alina is a um, uh, God, a little person. Um, so full disclosure, she tells him they've known each other for 13 years. Um, he knows all about her, her stature. He knows, you know, a lot about her. They've been together 13 years. They first meet, um, and he's really weird about it. Um, he has sex with her and she makes this weird comment like she took a ride on his disco stick she brings her roommate elijah there um who actually takes care of her a lot um he's like her caregiver because she's in a wheelchair but she needs extra help but she can get along but she needs extra help caleb is a regular sized person and he knows her situation and he's going on the show acting as if he's interested in her okay now, mind you, this is 90 Day Fiance, and we all know that these couples usually know each other beforehand like they do, but they're usually a lot closer, and they usually, like, know they're going to get married or get engaged. These two don't even know yet. So, and that that's going to bring me to the other couples, but Caleb and Alina. So, you can tell that, I guess, he's just not that into her. At some point, um, Elijah comes in the room this, like, last week, and they're having, or she's riding his disco stick, and he looks up and sees Elijah standing there why they're having sex staring at them asks him what he's doing the dude elijah says i just want to see what you're working with and i like what i see like fucking weird i really believe now that they were there all three of them i swear they were gonna have a threesome i think it was like i think alina because the way she reacted when caleb asked him why he came in the room like that the next day she just didn't really say much like i would be like yo dude like you're watching us have sex that's weird but anyway so Elijah at this dinner, when we discussed that, he drops the bomb that Alina has a secret for Caleb that she's been keeping. Okay, so Caleb has his excuse, you know, he has his excuse not to, to commit to her. He has an excuse to run home. He has an excuse not to talk to her anymore. Because this entire time, she's trying to get out of him how he feels. And she is like kind of just like hitting around like, you know, are we in a relationship? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know. Long story short, I'm sure by the end of uh, the season, they're back home and they're not together. So let's just move on because she's fired anyway. Um, let's go to, ex or I think her name's Jimena and Mike. Jimena, Xmena, whatever. Okay, she's in Colombia. This is the one that had the, the two kids and she has a history of being with toxic men. One's a hitman. Um, one baby dad's in prison. Um, so this guy, Mike, he's from New York. He's a little bit of a homebody kind of guy. Probably hasn't a lot of girlfriends. Lives with his pop and his dad, and I think he takes care of them, which is cool. Um, Jimena is a cute girl, um, probably looking for a way out, but probably also likes him. I think um, when he gets down to Colombia and they meet for the first time, you realize that he has furnished her entire apartment, brand new apartment with her two kids. He's got her food processor. I mean, he didn't just furnish it; he's got a food processor and everything for it. So pretty much, you think you know she's going to end up no matter what she's gonna be here with him <clears throat> i can't see any reason for them not to be together you think right well now we're in it i think what we they're together now i think it's like they've been together a week and all of a sudden she is she has like stink look on her face she looks annoyed he's burping he's farting on her he's like she's completely disgusted by this man she has called her sister and said i can't do this he's disgusting he's gross she completely turned off by all these bodily fluids and functions he's letting go and which is kind of gross i get it but like i mean for somebody who's on the 90 day fiance and is going to marry somebody they barely know you're gonna have to account for some of that shit. but i get it like when you don't really like somebody you don't really know and like you put all your eggs in that basket and you try to make yourself like them at first and then you start seeing like the things that you don't like about them and i think that's where she's at and i think she's disappointed in herself but fast forward <laughs> And um, she tells him all this, and he's like, you know, he's trying to catch on. He's trying to catch on that maybe she doesn't really like him that much. But as they're leaving, um, they go through this, this vacation on vacation where um, they're by themselves. And you would think, like, they'd reconnect and she'd 
make a decision whether to like them or not, but she just still looks miserable. So they're driving back, and he's like in his head doubting things. He just she he blows his nose in the, the Uber with the dirty tissue, just proves her point, and he wants to put it in the back of this guy's um, back of the seat and that thing, whatever, which is ooh, gross. She says something to him again, and she like freaks out. He then says, "I need to tell you about my medical condition. I have ADHD." Basically saying, explaining this to her that this medical condition, which we know what it is, I have it, causes him to be messy, causes him to fart and burp and do all these um, immature things. Now, with all that being said, um, he says it, helps, it messes his memory. I get that. I, I will be doing something and I get sidetracked and I'll forget the first thing. I mean, I'll start the water running for dishes. Something subtract, uh, distracts me. I go into the dining room. I, I do something stupid like... You know, say the dog needs something. I'll forget the water's running and it'll run for hours. I will, it'll escape me that I was even doing that. So stuff like that I get. He says that, it, it, I mean, it doesn't, you, you, you don't forget to um, <clears throat> not burp in front of people. You don't forget to not fart in people. You don't, in front of people. You don't forget to um, be polite and clean. But you do get to the point where it's like overwhelming and you get lazy and you don't want to do these things, I think. He doesn't want to do these things because he's in that lazy ADHD thing. And I think he's just telling her that. Um, I don't know. Anyway, she doesn't know really what it is. She takes it very seriously. And then all of a sudden, she loves him again. She apologizes and feels bad for um, dogging him about this stuff. But I think she just doesn't really understand that that's not really an excuse, Mike. But whatever. It seems like she's back on board. So go, Mike. Go, Jimena. I don't know. I guess the last. Whatever. Okay. Gino and Jasmine, holy shit, Gino, dude, my man, if this bitch wasn't going to fucking boil your bunnies, she is now, how stupid are you, Gino, Gino, okay, let's cut to Gino and Jasmine, first thing we, we see last week is this, this wacko, who, she's insecure, she's beautiful, by the way, but she's insecure, she is extremely psychotic, she's extremely crazy about him, she's extremely jealous, I mean, she's Larissa 2.0. Um, Gino's a, tush, a shy, timid, unsuccess, unsuccess, yeah, unsuspecting, nice guy, um, quiet guy, shy guy. Um, don't think he has a lot of money, but I'm sure he does okay for himself. Didn't have a job during COVID and managed to still have the money to spend to go there. Um, also take a vacation on a vacation with her because she didn't like her Christmas gift that she got him. He got her. So anyway, they're in wherever she's from. Um, Peru? I forget. Um, anywhere, somewhere nice anyway. Um, I think it's Peru, but while they're there, she admits how, um, insecure she is and that she makes Gino, um, check in where he's at, take pictures, like when they're not together. So now they're together and she's just not happy and she's, um, questioning him about stuff at his house that he lived with his ex-wife at home. And she asks about the paint colors. Now we know about the paint colors, right? She flipped the fuck out and she... She took the conversation as, um, he likes the paint colors because he picked them out with his ex-wife. That's how she looks at it. Really, she asked about the paint colors. She asked to pick them out. She baited the dude. Then she freaked the fuck out. And in punishment for that, Jasmine, of course, he's like, he has no clothes going on. He had no idea this was going to happen. She has a complete meltdown over paint wall colors. And he gets to the point where he says, he tries to explain to her in a, a calm way. And then she's like, okay. And she kind of seems like she understands. And he goes, well, now that we've talked about that, I hope I never see her act like that again. Do you know? The woman's 40 years old. She's been acting like that her whole life. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You need to run. Run, 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 do you know? Because I guarantee that's not the first time. And it's not going to be the last time. She just has a... It, Something's missing. Something's disconnected in that uh, the sense that she knows that Gino's a great guy. She ha he has done nothing to her. He has done nothing but proves a lot of loyalty and love. She's taking her past and projecting it onto him. And by the time we have day three or day four and they're on this vacation, um, Gino is accepted the fact that she's crazy. Um, wait, wait, before that, she uh, tries to punish him because she wants to punish him for the paintball colors. She... Um, books this vacation and makes him spend a lot of money, tells him that um, she's not on birth control, or she is on birth control when he didn't know that, and he was, that was his punishment, 
Also, she had a stripper come for a divorce party that she had while he was there visiting. Now, this is all preceding this vacation thing that they go on. Vacation on vacation. Well, we see how she feels extremely bad for her actions. She starts crying. She's realizing that she's very um, toxic and harsh and she's going to do better and she knows he's a great guy. In the conversation, Gina's like, okay, I, he kind of looks scared because he thinks he's being tricked again, I think. I, I think he's on edge. Well, this dumbass, Gino, you basically just proved this girl right. You gave her all the reasons to act the way she's acting. Because Gino, my man, what'd you do? You called your ex-girlfriend. You called an ex-girlfriend before you got there. And you must have said some things and did some things that were not favorable to Jasmine. Because she gets a phone call from the ex. But because she's felt so bad, she decides she's not going to listen to it or check it. And she deletes and blocks the girl. Or she doesn't delete, she blocks the girl. Okay. Like, you would think that Gina would think, okay, um, um, he should be happy about this, right? But in this conversation, as she's saying this to Gina, she says, well, normally I'm crazy and I would think that this is a red flag and I would be the opposite of not calm and I would want to see what she wants, Gino. So, Gino... I choose to trust you and I'm not going to talk to her. And Gino has a sigh of relief. Except. Something in his face must have, like, clued her in. Because when Gino is answering questions, like, all she does, she asks, when's the last time you talked to her? And what do you think she would want? Or something like that. And Gino's answers are, like, vague. And it's like, ding, 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 ding. She takes it as he's hiding something. So then she says, you know what? I am going to call the girlfriend back and I am going to see what she wants. And all you see is Gino go, oh shit. And um, confessional, he says, I think I fucked up. Fast forward to the scenes from next week and this bitch is going crazy. She hates him. He lied to her. He broke her heart. So I'm assuming that Gino must have called her the ex-girlfriend either right before he got to Panama or when he was in Panama and she was acting like really mean to him. And I guess he either... I'm assuming he might have called her to talk about Jasmine and the crazy and how to act to it because he was new to it. Or he called because he he needed some. I don't know. I don't know what he did, but he did something because she goes ballistic. And I don't even know after that. So we're going to have to tune in for next week. That brings me to Kimberly. Yeah, y'all know that I went nuts last night and had to drop a short because I could not believe what I was watching. This chick. I only need a binder for this. Kimberly, the super fan. Now, y'all know who Soldier Boy is. We all know who Soldier Boy is. Usman. Married to an American chick from last season. Older woman. Shocker, didn't work out. Usman is Soldier Boy. He has a record deal and his um, subscriber count goes up. His follower goes up. He's on the show. He ends up divorcing the older woman. And fast forward to this season, we see him again. And we see him with Kimberly. Kimberly's another older woman from the States. Now, what we find out is Kimberly is a fan of Usman and has been following him and talking to him for a while. And um, he tells us that he is, it's a potential girlfriend. Um, he invited her to Tanzania where he's shooting a, a video um, to see if they could potentially be something, right? Kimberly is obsessed. Um, she's a fan. She wears nothing but Usman t-shirts, Soldier Boy t-shirts. Um, she talks like a fan, acts like a fan, and you see the chick and you're like, oh my god, he's using another one. Well, as time progresses, we hear from him that he's there to shoot this video called Zara. We find out Zara is a girlfriend or ex-girlfriend from the States, young, pretty, hot chick. Why is she there? Or why is Kimberly there and why is Zara gone? We also find out that Zara and him were in love, but... And Zara was supposed to be his 90-day fiancé person, but she ends up breaking up with him and says that he she doesn't like the lifestyle, so there's no show. Usman panics. He tries to find a replacement, and he lands up with Kimberly. Super fan. Kimberly has no idea that she was second fiddle or second choice. So we think, okay, how's this going to pan out? She's going to be supportive, or she's just going to be like, you know, yes, man, yes, man. No. They get to the place, whatever. So this is like precursor to last um, 
last night's episode, but, you know, let me just let you know that, like, from day one, she, um, okay, first of all, she tells us she's in love with him. How can you be in love with him? He's never reciprocated any type of relationship. It's only been over the phone. She brings him four thousand, three to $4,000 in gifts. PlayStation, uh, the newest one. Um, iPad. I, it was like four to 5000 three. I don't know. It was up there, guys. She also drained her 401k for the trip. She's doing all this for Soldier Boy. Um, brings him all these gifts. Okay. It's kind of funny because it's like desperation. It's, it's best. And he's trying to be polite. He's trying to be nice. He has made it very clear to this woman that he is only um, seeing how things go. Um, they're not in a relationship. They will not have sex. They will not sleep in the same room. Um, this is strictly a friendship thing at first, and it will see. Kimberly is okay with that, but the first time, the first night they're there is when she gives him the gifts, and we see her giving him $4,000 worth of gifts. He doesn't stay with her that night. He leaves. She's disappointed. She's putting on four ninety nine in mascara. $4.99, $4,000 in gifts, change your 401k, but you're wearing $4.99 mascara, my friend. Girl, what are you doing? I wear $4.99 mascara. I can afford $59 mascara. That's not the point. You might be able to, you, my friend, cannot afford to be buying this man $4,000 in gifts if you're draining your 401k. The $4.99 mascara says it all, and the fact that you drew from your 401k. Now, I wear $4.99 mascara because I'm a label whore, and I like nice things. But I won't freaking spend that shit. Like, I'm a label whore. I will spend the money on, like, clothes and stuff. My 4 dollars mascara works for me. I'm also not a super fan. I'm also not freaking spending money on... All right. Now, see, this is... We can equate it to this. When I was a drug addict, right? I spent money on... My priority in my life was money for drugs. Okay? I should not have been buying... Using my money for drugs when I couldn't even afford to fucking eat or drink. So, if you can't afford for a good mascara, then you should be buying some stranger fucking gifts, Right? That's just my opinion, but whatever. It's funny, but it gets worse, guys, because Usman has been respectful to her. He has been honest with her, brutally honest with her. She doesn't take a hint. Um, besides the video shoot where she bossed everybody around, he acts like he likes that. His friends, we're going to call them goofballs. It's like another, her own set of Angela's goofballs. His two friends that, like, basically look at her sideways and think that she's annoying as hell. She is a nag. She bitches. Like, she is Angela 2.0, okay? She's Angela 2.0. Um, Usman tells her that, like, she, okay, so she says, I want you to stay in my room. He freaks out. He's like, no, that was not what we discussed. Stop pushing me. And she gets very mad, has an attitude. She, she's okay with it, though. That's the first night. The next morning, they hang out. He doesn't, he holds her hand kind of leads her on for the day but just he's getting to know her he's not promising her anything so again he has never agreed to stay in her room before they go home from the stay trip she says i want you to stay in my room and she it starts with a begging and a begging and the attitude and he's like look i you know i told you i wasn't ready and then blah, blah blah she gets an attitude they go home or back to the hotel fast forward 2 30 in the morning he ends up calling her and saying i'm going to come stay in your room but they put a partition up he says, I do not want to, you know, sex. She tries to get it from him and she gets mad again. This is night one. The partition's up. Um, and she's like mad about it. And it's like, she t he told you that this is not going to happen. And you begging is a fucking turn off. But anyway, fast forward again to the next day. They hang out again. She's pressuring him again. She wants to know what's going on. So he is like repeated, repeated, repeated. I will come stay in your room. Please don't bug me. Um, he grabs a suitcase from his room. His friends are, are trying to talk to him and, and find out what's going on. His friends say, look, just because, you know, you know, he's like, look, she's been loyal to me. I love her loyalty. I want to see where this goes. His friend's like, look, what is, she's loyal to you. So you, what is the, re the reward for that? Fake love? Like you're going to fake, like, be nice to her if you don't, you're not really that into her? Usman's like, I don't know. We'll see. He's obviously not that into her, but. So he goes to her room. She's under the impression that he's there and he's going to stay in her room from there on and they're going to end up in this relationship and he's just like we'll wait and see again gets to the room now she is um walking around in the nightgown she has no brow on and she has a robe on he's sitting there and he she's like drinking champagne and you can see that she's she expects sex again and he's told her and made clear now so um she feeds him some drinks all of a sudden he opens her robe and he looks like he's interested right for one second they, then he's like, all right, let's go to bed. They put the partition up. He lays down. She starts again. 
I want to have sex, I want to have sex, I want to have sex. And he's like, oh my God, I told you. Like, no. Like, I like you, but no, we're not ready. She throws a fit. She is, like, desperate. She's like, I'm in love with you. And he's like, I like you a lot, but, like, you need to chill. Dude, she ends up getting up. She's like, I can't do this. She's yelling at the cameraman. She's like, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't believe he's treating me like this. <sighs> okay, treating you like what? He's not. He's, he's literally not sleeping with you because he's trying to be respectful. He has not led you on. He has been honest with you. You have been nothing but pushy and, like, annoying and, like, pushy, pushy, pushy. And he's telling you, like, stop it and you keep doing it. Stop it. You keep doing it. Then the worst part of this whole thing is she drops some bullshit on him. Like, my son is wants to have a talk with you and he – what do you think he's going to feel about you disrespecting me? My son is my world and I – and I, I, um, he, he, he protects me and he is very, um, protective of me and he's not going to like the way, what you're doing. He's not going to like the way you're treating me. He's not going to like the way you're disrespecting me. I'm sorry, Kimberly. The way he's disrespecting you? You're the one who's get goddamn giving him alcohol like he's a, like he's like a 12 year old and you're like grooming him and you're like begging him for sex. Basically raping the man when he's like, get off of me. That's basically what it looks like. And you're telling me that you're going to call your son and tell your son you're going to gaslight this man is what you sound like you're doing. Gaslight the man, Usman, who has done nothing to you but be honest with you and tell your son he's disrespecting you. He don't, first of all, he don't owe your son anything. He does not know your son. Your son does not know him. This man is not in a relationship with you. You are not going to gaslight him to your son. And I hope to God when he watches this episode back, he tells you about yourself, Kimberly, because that was completely uncalled for. You did not have to threaten him and with your son I mean like at this point he is like done with you he's like this is ridiculous how dare you even go there do you know how dumb that sounds and I'm like feeling bad for him actually like whether he had good intentions or not he's been honest about it like I always say be whatever you want just be honest about it I'll respect your game you want to fucking murder people in your house all day long I might not fuck with you but I'm not judging you right it's like it is what it is and the fact that she has came to Tanzania as a super fan knowing that they're not in a relationship and has completely flipped the script I've seen interviews where she's like well it may not have worked for a relationship but it did its job meaning he has more followers and more clout and she got clout so basically you were a super fan you were in love with the dude but when it didn't work out you're happy with just the clout now I mean come on like when I say that these fuckers put a stain on the 90 day fiance process not that I'm out trying to marry somebody in a different country but there are actual couples that do fall in love like you got John and um, I forget her name from England you can tell they're a real couple there's plenty of them Lauren and Alexi David and Annie there is actual couples that work out and that actually are in love and then you have these assholes like you know Usman come on man like you know you're doing this for your soldier boy clout whatever we liked you from last season but it is what it is I guess we need every once in a while we need like a funny like I don't want to say funny but like Usman's cool uh, you know, literally, like I said, this chick is just nuts and I can't even fuck with her. Like, I just ooze men all the way. Like, I can't even fuck with this chick. Like, she's not even cool. Like, being cool would be you not begging him for sex. You just being respectful. You just fucking hanging out. You not being bossy. You not being naggy. You not threatening your son with him. You not gaslighting him. Like, he wanted a cool chick. You're not cool. Whatever. So, I mean, that's 90 Day Fiance. I, um... You know, if you guys watch it, then you know who I'm talking about. I'm learning soon to edit, and I'll be able to, like, put picture up as I'm speaking. So when I refer to certain couples or people, you know what I'm talking about, and it'll remind you. So, I don't know, give me time for that. Um, I will be back next week to do 90 Day Fiance. I'm going to drop some um, a schedule for lives this week um, because Salt Lake City, y'all. Wow. And there is some shit going, on, going down in Beverly Hills with Erica Jane and... We need to talk about it, guys. So listen, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your opinions on the couples. Let me know what you want to hear, what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. Please, guys, like, I mean, like the videos. Even share them. I think, like, I didn't know this, but when you share stuff to your community page, that's good for me because I don't have one yet. I don't have enough subscribers. But, yo, I would be doing that shit all day long for y'all. Y'all meaning my other friends on here, my work wife, you know, and all my other content creator friends. Anyway, guys, comment, like, subscribe, all that shit. See you later. Oh, this was 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days.